Welcome back into the College Chaos Podcast. Garrett Ross, Jack McKenzie here with you. And it is now time to talk some Big Ten football. Oh, yeah. Let's get into the defense. Let's get ugly. Oh. A lot of punts. Let's go. Iowa all day. Woo. The, okay. We can't start talking about the Big Ten without sta- uh, starting with Kevin Warren. Yep. He came in and completely changed the landscape of college football. Um really just kind of bullied everybody. He was playing chess when other people were playing checkers. And then he leveraged that into becoming the uh, um, leading the Chicago, was the president of the president Chicago of the Bears. Bears. Okay. That's a big, that's like such a flex on so many people. It's ridiculous. But how do you, like, how do you replace a guy who did that? Like, do you want to be the guy who has to step in and, and fill the shoes left behind by Kevin Warren after he just did what he did to college athletics? I mean, you can look at it one of two ways, I feel like. I feel like you can either look like, I have all the toys, and we've, like, got a good foundation. We're going to have some fun. Or you can look at it like, if I mess around with this too much, we can fall off from the SEC, and I will be the worst thing that ever happened to this conference. I, I just think it's so risky. Like, I would not want to be the person who directly follows him up. Get, maybe let me be the second one. Like, you don't want to be the guy who followed up John Wooden or something. Like, you know, you just it's, there's I a certain standard. I don't put standard. Kevin Warren in that kind of atmosphere. Dude, man, what he like, did, I, I, look, maybe I'm overblowing it. I just think what he did was was so remarkable, such a land like a landscape It was huge changing. for the conference. It was huge for the conference. It really was. And when the news came out, I was like, okay, one of the first names who popped in my head, and this happens just all the time, especially when it's regarding things up north, was like Oliver Luck. Like so This is definitely going to be, oh, God, we're going to hear Oliver Luck again. Luckily, that name has not been brought up. Yeah. But until you brought it up. Great until job. Until I brought it up. Great so job, I put Gary. it out there in the world. There you go, Oliver Luck. So, but one name who is really at the top of the list is Jim Phillips, the the ACC mm-hmm. commissioner, which I think is really funny when you look back at the alliance and what <laughs> Kevin Warren was kind of like how he pulled the yeah. wool over his eyes and what they were able to do to the, the Pac-12 as well. But this is a Chicago native. Uh, this is a guy who is very familiar with the conference. He spent time at Northwestern. He's mm-hmm. had some time at, at uh, Notre Dame as well. I just, I think he would be a great fit because – you already know what the standards are. You know what to expect right now in the current landscape of college athletics. I think it's almost biggest for the future dominoes that it could push over. He has a relationship with Notre Dame, who everyone and their mother feels like fits better with the Big Ten than they with do. the ACC. He's coming from the ACC, which would destabilize the ACC probably. All of a sudden, you like stuff comes in play if you take him from the ACC, I feel like. It does. And it comes in play earlier than I think we would be expecting the ACC to come into play. I don't – look, I'm not, I don't think that if he came in and took the job that within two or three years – no, I feel like Notre Dame I – don't, I don't think he could – even with his ties, I don't no, see I don't him bringing could, Notre Dame into the Big Ten. I don't. I think Notre Dame is so I, – I think, I think the ACC falls before Notre Dame comes, but I think if he, if he is with the Big Ten when the ACC falls – and I'm saying when, not if. That's oh, it's probably going a bold down. St- yeah. statement. But then I feel like that's great for the Big Ten. So maybe maybe they eye the future with with Phillips. But uh, there's some other other names that I feel like you kind of always have to mention when jobs like this come up. Who's, who's sticking out to you? He's not sticking out because I think he's going to get the job. He's just sticking out because it's Gene Smith. Oh, I definitely. Mean, I mean, definitely. like, you, you, he's an establishment. Ohio State has been running the conference because – it's all about football and who's been the best at football up until the last two years. Ohio State. Ohio State. Who are who are you apparently a homer for? <laughs> apparently Ohio State. I'm apparently an Ohio State homer, which I mean yeah. they had the best you know some of the best uniforms in college football, but you know uh, other than that. that. Uh, but yeah, so Gene Smith, his name pops out to me. Um, Jennifer Heppel, who was apparently a finalist last time this this job was open uh, from the Patriot League, um, especially be, just because. Getting a female in that position of power, that that would, uh, I feel like some people would be bargaining for that more. Mm-hmm. Um, but the name that's that's like absolutely number one sticking out to me, it's got to be uh, Mark Silverman, the Fox Television executive. That would be an intriguing move, just just given the landscape and and really the massive deal that the TV deal that uh, they just put together with the Big Ten. I think knowing that aspect and that side of things and all the loopholes would definitely be beneficial. I just don't know 
like from day to day details that you're dealing with school to school, how familiar he would be with that. But at the same time, we've seen in the Big 12, Brett Yormark come yeah. in. He had no experience whatsoever, and he's completely he's got more changed. more experience that's like Silverman right. experience. And I just wonder if the the academic side of the Big Ten, because they have to be approved by the presidents, I believe. Right. Um, if they kind of make a play to get a president in that commissioner role, or if they're like – kind of getting uppity and being like, we're not just about chasing the money, even though that's all it really should be about right. at the end of the day, because that's what the business is, as sad as it is for me to say that. So, like, I think they should go with a guy that's more like Silverman, but I wonder if the Big Ten presidents are going to push for more, like, another president or well, a chancellor. Or it's intriguing that you brought that up, because go, kind of reverting back to Phillips and his situation, he was a candidate before Warren the first time. Mm -hmm. And what really kind of did him in was the votes from the presidents, but now – there's been a, such a mass change of the guard across the, the conference that you have so many new faces in there. I believe there's only like two uh, presidents in place that were there from the, the first hiring when Kevin Warren was brought on. So it'd be interesting to see if that kind of went into Phillips' favor as well. Uh, one, one name that is kind of intriguing to me is UCLA AD uh, Martin Jarmond yep. because you're bringing the Bruins in. You have the connections um, from the West Coast. And while you have that L.A. market, I feel like his ties in the community could help them expand more out there. So that would be intriguing as well. But do you turn the keys over to someone who's brand new? Probably not. That's the one thing it's that, an, that's it's kind an of It's an interesting option they've got. It's a very interesting option. It really got. is. But, look, regardless, I think that whoever replaces Kevin Warren, they're going to have big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. But they are going to have one hell of a conference that they're going to be representing. They've got some toys to play with. 